Whether a transformer is small and wired onto a circuit board with other components, or pre-wired for three phases for an indoor installation, a single utility transformer feeding a couple homes, three single phase transformers wired together to provide three phase power for a small commercial facility, or even a large oil-filled utility substation transformer with radiators and fans to assist with cooling, they all operate on the same basic principles. What I have here is a schematic of a simple single phase transformer. There's a symbol for single phase. And what that basically means is I have a wire coming in from the source, wraps around the core, of course, and then a return path, a single voltage coming in. Wire in, return path, single phase, okay? The other values I wrote in the middle are values that represent the whole transformer. So it's a single phase transformer. It has a power rating of 120 volt amps, okay? Transformers, are very efficient. They've been around for oh, a long time. And the, we consider the power that goes into a transformer is the same as the power going out for our calculations. There are losses in the transformer, and that's partially why the transformer gets warm, right? It, heat doesn't come for free. And if you touch a transformer, generally it's warmer than the ambient air. But those losses are so small relative to the power of the transformer, that we tend to ignore those losses and just consider whatever power goes in is the same as the power going out, at least for our basic calculations. So this transformer is rated at 120 volt amps. Volt amps, remember, are a form of power, which is made up of volts times amps. And if you remember your AC theory, volt amps is the total circuit power. In our power triangle, it was the hypotenuse because Regardless of the phase angle or power factor of the loads, the transformer has to provide for the entire circuit. And we call that volt amps. So that's what we rate transformers in. Bigger transformers are kilovolt amps, thousands of volt amps, or huge subs substation transformers are megavolt amps, millions of volt amps. Okay, but this is just a little guy, 120 volt amps. The other number that's in the middle here deals with the turns ratio. A turn is when the wire comes in, it gets wrapped around the core and each full wrap around the core is considered a turn or wrap. It's part of the winding, okay? So what this means is I have 10 times as many turns on the primary as I do on the secondary. What use is that to me? My ratios. The number of turns on the primary compared to the number of turns on the secondary is directly proportional to the voltage on the primary compared to the voltage on the secondary. So what that means to me is that the voltage on the secondary has to be one-tenth of the voltage on the primary. Another way to look at it is to consider volts per terms. So in my mind, it's not exactly how they build transformers, but it helps with figuring out the calculations. In my mind, I often think of a transformer, the primary in this case, having as many turns as the voltage. So I imagine that it has 120 turns. And the secondary has one tenth as many. For every 10 here, it has one turn. That just helps me figure out how the voltage works. 120 turns to 12 turns. 120 to 12 has to be directly proportional with 120 to 12. So whether you want to simply use the ratio 10 to one and realize that your secondary voltage is one tenth of your primary, or whether you want to say 
one volt per turn. There's one tenth as many turns. One volt per turn adds up to 12 volts. Either way, whichever way helps you think through the calculation process. So then we've got to get to amperage. Okay. So if my power is 120 volt amps here, and I have 120 volts, how do I figure my current? Well, I simply divide both sides by the voltage. It cancels out on the one side. And I left with volt amps over volts gives me current. So let's do that for the primary. One amp. That's all the current I can run through with this power rating. If I run more current through the primary, I'm going to exceed the power rating. Not a good thing. So let's look at our ratios again. The voltage is directly proportional. Primary, primary, secondary, secondary. To the number of turns. But the current I put the secondary up there, S for secondary, P for primary. Put the secondary in the numerator and the primary here. Is it inversely proportional? Well, let's do the math and see. On the secondary, I still have 120 volt amps. I told you the power coming in, we consider equal to the power going out. I do my division, 120 divided by 12, 10 amps, indeed. The current is therefore inversely proportional. And that makes sense. What we've seen on transformers in the field is that higher voltage, lower amps, smaller wire. I drop down to a lower voltage and I often get bigger wire to carry more current. So this is how we do our basic calculations. I can be given any variety of the values. If I'm given volt amps and volts, I can figure current. If I'm given current and volts, I can figure the power. If I'm given primary voltage and secondary voltage, could you figure out the turns ratio? Sure could. 120 divided by 12. It would be 10 to one. So this is the basics of how we work. We're gonna build on this a little bit, but when we're dealing with single phase transformers, this is pretty much it. The ratios and the power.